everyone and welcome back to my art studio. In today's video I'm going to show you a little something different. I have been working on a pastel drawing of a couple of otters and I started this a couple months ago, probably three or four months ago, and I put it aside to do the other graphite drawing I was working on and um, I've just picked it back up and since I have started doing videos I decided I would try to record it. So of course recording in my studio, aka my apartment, has still been a little bit tough for me. Uh, I still need some equipment, like a tripod and some lights, so hopefully it's good enough, but um, in the future I hope to maybe plan on getting some of that stuff to make these videos a little better quality, a little easier setup, but uh, I hope you enjoy the video. It's going to be a sped up version of the second otter on this picture. There are three in total, so I've filmed the second one, I've already done the first one, and then I think maybe next week or sometime I will hope to film the third one as well as the rest of the background. So you'll get to see my process a little bit, um, how I layer things up, start with the base layer, add the details on top. My style kind of is a little bit all over the place with graphite pastels right now, but uh, it's still, you know, it works for me. I like the outcome in the end, so I hope you enjoy the video. Um, and yeah, if you do, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Thanks. All right, well, let's get right into it. Surprise voiceover. I'm getting uh, a little bit more skill in my video editing <laughs> software here, but um, I've really been enjoying it. I do apologize that my camera is kind of getting um, focused and unfocused. It was just tracking my hand, but you know, it's okay. We'll just work with it. So the otter's eyes were really small because I do have three subjects going on in this drawing. so. Not a whole lot of details, very basic. Um, I still might kind of go back over them and liven them up a bit towards the end of the drawing. Um, I kind of end up taking a step back and adding in details or little things as needed. Um, but for now, I'm gonna leave it at that. You do see I start with my dark colors first, a bunch of different browns, um, maybe just a hint of black, but um, the idea is you start with your base tone color and that that dark color still does show through underneath once you start getting your top layers down. So you've got to get those dark values just right first. We'll get to it in a little bit though, but you'll see underneath the neck and the chest, it was actually this tan, rich, light cream color um, on the otter. And I did not have that in my color palette. Um, I kind of struggled with getting this creamy tan color. So um, I just kind of am figuring it out as I go. Um, I have to kind of build up those base colors first, of course, and put down some creams on top to really kind of make it that creamy tan look. So that's the beauty with pastels though. You can kind of layer on top to create the colors you need if you don't exactly have it in your palette. That little tool there that you see me use is just a pastel pencil smudging tool. I don't know what the actual term is, but um, it just kind of pushes the pastel into the pastel mat without actually using up the tooth of the paper, which makes you able to then go back on top of it again over and over, adding your layers on top. So you can see I'm trying to figure out that tan color, that light creamy color, who knows. I do want to add to my pastel pencil collection. I use um, Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils and the Carbothello pencils for these drawings. It's all I have in my collection, but you know, my birthday's coming up in a couple months. <laughs> Adding in the hairs and the details, that's my favorite part of these drawings. 
I love the kind of the final detail phase. Um, I don't like the messy <laughs> base layer phase. Um, I want it to actually look like what it's going to look like quickly. So I struggle with putting just like a sloppy base layer down first, which it's supposed to be sloppy. It's more of like a map for you to know where your shadows and highlights are going to be. But, you know, I don't like the messy phase. I like to have all the little details in as soon as possible. But maybe I'll get better at that because it is a good thing to have a map down to know where you're going. Actually using some light grays for some of those highlights that are right on top of the really dark darks. Um, it gives just like a shine and if you just went through with a white it would really kind of just wash it out and be too much too harsh or so using colors that you didn't think you might use uh, end up working you do see me work from left to right because i'm right-handed and i do have that glassine paper down underneath my hand that keeps me from smudging any of the work I've put down. Um, pastels do smudge um, pretty easily. Um, not that bad with pastel paper. Um, so pastel matte paper, I should say. So it really works good, but you do have to have something to rest your hand on so you don't mess up the paper or smudge anything as you go. These little feet were a lot of fun to do. Tiny details, but Eventually it all comes together. They're all sitting on a log, so um, once we get that log in, I'll add more shadows and different things in between the otters and how they like sit together because there's a lot of dark shading going on. But stuff like that, you kind of have to figure out later, leave for last. Coming down his last little paw here. Just adding in those little highlights on top. My favorite part. My reference was really kind of blurry in these areas, so I was having to just figure it out as I went, kind of taking some artistic liberties in there, but it was fun. I'll probably still tweak the area as it all comes together but yeah so thanks guys i really hope you enjoyed this video um, these guys are a lot of fun to do. We still have one more otter to do, so stay tuned for next week's video.